Let's talk about syncing up waves across multiple clients in a multiplayer game. This is not normally required because waves are just decorative and very few people actually care enough to want to sync them up. But I do. I would like to sync them up because my game happens on an ocean and with the waves strongly influence the way that the boats float and heal and stuff. Now the server does have final authority, so even if the clients are desynced, how the boats float and stuff will end up being resolved by the server, but we don't want the server constantly making large corrections every nanosecond. We would like all of the clients to agree with the server's opinion, so that simulation seems good and everything seems fluid. Problem is that the waves in Unreal's basic plugin use time since level load in order to determine where the waves should be. And the problem is that time since level load is different because everybody loads the level at a different time. So that's not going to be very much use to us. Everybody's got a different opinion as to what it should be. We need to override Unreal's built-in time system with one of our own. We need to be able to pass it different times uh, to keep everybody synced up. The two challenges here are how do we pass at a time and how do we have a time that is matched across all of the clients and the server? Well, how do we pass at a time is actually quite straightforward, so let's take a peek at that first. Uh, if we were to look at, here it is, if we were to look at this, this is the function that they use to get the water time in all of their various Gerstner wave calculations, and you can see that this is what you normally have. Then it goes into this lerp. This lerp normally has an alpha of zero, so we just use these. However, they've given us the option to freeze time, which just says, you know, we're going to just pass you a manual time and don't bother counting, just use the manual time. The idea in the documentation is that manual time will just sit at a value and you will have a frozen world. We're not going to use it that way, though. We're going to pass it a custom time every frame. Now, this custom time isn't sourced from the server. The server is not sending out a time that everybody should use every frame. As long as everybody has the same clock, then we can all just do our own math and it's going to line up. We don't have to constantly communicate as to what time it's supposed to be. But we do have to communicate sometimes because we do want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So we're not going to do it every frame. That would be hugely unnecessary. But we are going to do it once in a while. And we're going to do it here in the player controller. Yellow is on the server, pink is on the client. That's just how I always label things. During event on possess, we start up the syncing process. On possess is something that seems to only run on the server, and it also runs at a relatively good time when we're pretty sure that the world is fully in operation and everything is spawned. So we could run this on begin play, but I've had some problems with that not properly firing up all of the objects that need to be fired up. So I'm just doing it on possess. That also means that if you go and possess a boat, it will immediately resync you right then, just in case you were, uh, you know, um, off sync when you got in the seat. We have to set the owner, and the reason we set the owner is because we're going to be using this owning client replication, and if we don't have an owner, we don't get any replication. So we set the owner to the pawn we just possessed. For some reason that works. I do not know why the custom player controller is not automatically its own owner, but we do have to tell it that the pawn owns the controller. It's just for replication purposes, but it's kind of strange. Then we simply get the real time in seconds, which is time since level load, and sync it right here. This is what I showed you. It's right here. This is it. Just call it. So this takes a server real time seconds, and then it takes a look at what we're doing. First off, we set our owner here locally as well, just so that we're on the same page. After that, assuming that we can find our player state, which is not guaranteed, there are times when the network is so bad that you do not get a player state. But assuming we can find our player state, what we're going to do is we are going to take this server time, we're going to subtract our real time from it, and we're also going to subtract half of our ping. This should give us a good estimate of our time relative to the server's time. And that seems to work really well. We just set this time offset, and of course that time offset is something that we use every frame right here. Event tick. If we're remote, you know, if we're on a client, then we set the, uh, the manual time on the MPC water collection. 
there it is. That's all you have to do. You don't have to find the materials or reference any objects. You just set this parameter in this collection. And of course, on begin play, we do do one thing. We set freeze time to one. So that's basically it. It's not that challenging of a setup here. Now, one thing I am concerned about is in testing, I'm not 100% sure where the custom player controller exists. I'm not 100% sure that this exists just between the server and one client. So I did put this logic in, but I haven't had to use it yet. So it seems to be okay, just like this. Now I'm mostly making this video for me because later I'm gonna have to do this again and I'll probably have forgotten how I did it. But I do wanna make it clear that this seems to work fine. And if you have a better way of doing it, you can let me know. This works well with our ability to determine the height of the water using a particle system, which just does that math again, but you know, for only specific locations. Uh, it just has the same basic setup, so I've already made a video on that, and if you need to know how to do that, you can just look it up. Uh, all of this together means that I should be able to have boats that float the same for everybody. How wonderful. That does not completely solve the issue, because as you can see, as I walk here, there is a long delay before it starts to show up on the other client. And of course, there's a delay before the server calculates it as well, halfway between these two delays, more or less. And that means that if I do have a long lag, though far, though the way that the ship is healing and tipping will be very different between when I'm putting in the inputs and when the server is reading the inputs. And that might lead to some issues, so I might have to do something to try and resolve that. But I think that that's going to be okay-ish. This kind of lag is hopefully not what you're playing with, but uh, we'll see. It's all a prototype. <laughs> Have a good one.